Good morning all. A fairly unremarkable cordless power tool battery. Uh, this is a Wix branded 10.8 volt, 1.3 amp hour, so it's not particularly capacious. Fairly unremarkable that is, until we learn the price. One pound. Yes, one pound for this three cell battery pack. That makes the cells inside worth 33 and a third pence each. And uh, because it was only one pound, I bought loads of them. So here it is on Wix's website. And yes, it is indeed one pound. Now, of course, this is a clearance item. Uh, so when they're gone, they're gone. And they don't have any online. So you need to check the stock in your local store. And uh, High Wycombe don't have any. Obviously, Chesham have run out because I cleaned them out. Uh, Slough, Aylesbury out of stock. There are three in Hemel Hempstead, if you're quick. But uh, be careful if you decide to rush off and get some of these things. I drove from Watford to Ryslip in the rush hour. And the staff at Ryslip just weren't interested and wouldn't even go around the back to see if they had some of these things in stock. So in a moment, I'm going to strip this thing down to see what's inside. But uh, take a look at this. Here's another Wix battery. And this one is perhaps even more remarkable because this, this is their uh, 18 volt or five cell battery pack. They're the same cells probably, 1.3 amp hours. And yes, this is selling for one pound. <laughs> that makes these cells 20 pence each. Now I only managed to bag two of these from stores on the sort of northwestern side of London. Uh, there don't seem to be many of these around, but you never know, there might be some up north possibly. Now what's with this 10.8 volt business? I mean this Parkside uh, three cell battery pack says 12 volts and this Ryobi, again three cell battery pack, also says 12 volts. Well, it's just pure marketing, really. This battery, as you can see, is quite old, uh, 2015. And back then, they just seemed to like to be a bit more honest about the nominal voltage of the cells. Interesting that they've gone for 10.8 and not 11.1. Uh, 10.8 is three lots of 3.6. 11.1, of course, is three lots of 3.7. I'm just not sure that 11.1 is a very attractive voltage to end users. 10.8 just kind of sounds better. These are very similar, the uh, Parkside and the Wix, and they've even got the same polarity. So does the Wix one fit in the Parkside drill? Let's give it a try. No, because all this gubbins gets in the way. So no, nothing doing. So let's get these three screws out. They're just standard Phillips. Now this 1.3 amp hours does make the cells in here um, a little bit impractical for sort of real life projects, but um, I'm thinking I want to sort of start experimenting with getting blocks of cells together using BMSs, maybe even doing some spot welding. I've got an idea for a low tech spot welder, uh, which may or may not work. But uh, yeah, I just want to build myself some battery packs. So to have some cells at a very low cost is a good thing. Now I've discovered that if you squeeze the top and bottom, this kind of comes apart a little bit more easily. And uh, there's the circuit board. So now that we've got the top off this thing, now does it fit in the Parkside drill? Oh, physically, yes. Yes, finally, I've got uh, someone's battery to fit in someone else's power tool. Great stuff. So zooming in on this thing, what can we see? Well, a couple of MOSFETs here, a couple of low value, very low value resistors here, which look like uh, current sense. Now, if you follow the trace from battery minus, through the low value resistors, through the MOSFETs, we come out to out minus. So it looks like it's measuring current 
and also controlling whether battery minus is connected to out minus using these two MOSFETs. Um, over on this side we've got this yellow wire. Now that runs down to this tab which isn't marked but my guess is that this comes from the charger and this is the means to charge this battery pack and that runs around to this MOSFET. You can tell it's a MOSFET because three legs connected together, four legs connected together and this odd one here which will be the gate. So I think uh, what this MOSFET's doing is shutting off the charger uh, power, I suppose you could call it, by turning off this MOSFET. So uh, yellow from the charger runs through the MOSFET, through this diode, and into uh, what looks like battery positive. All right, let's uh, slide this lot out. And we've got uh, various connectors here which just pop out of their holders like so that's the uh, that's the out negative out positive and this one I can be careful not to short these haven't I and this one I, as I say I think comes from the charger there's a temperature switch here I believe it's a switch it might even be a mechanical bimetallic thing and on there it actually says 60 degrees C. So my guess is that this either uh, closes the circuit or possibly opens it at 60 degrees C. And I don't think there's enough current uh, handling capability in these wires to directly switch it, uh, switch the battery off, even though it says F1 there. My guess is that um, this is sensed by some transistors and that will shut off these MOSFETs if we've got over temperature or indeed over current possibly. So with these three connectors disconnected from this plastic base that slides out and we can see that we've got a red wire going to this connection that's called on the top uh, B2 positive and the white wire tucks in under this little piece of insulating cardboard that's called B1 positive, so certainly this circuit board is looking at uh, all of the cell voltages. Now I'm starting to get a little bit nervous of this thing because we've got flying tabs here uh, in danger of touching bits of battery. So let's bend all of these away. I'll see if I can get the circuit board uh, off without disconnecting wires. Looks like it might come off. Uh, because there do look like there's quite a lot of stuff on the underside of this board um, including lots of little six pin tiny six pin possibly SOT 23 devices let's see if we can have a look at those and uh, yeah there's lots of stuff under here but no microcontroller it looks like so is this a completely discrete design where a load of sensing circuit controls uh, these cutoff MOSFETs and this charger cut off MOSFET. Really interesting and are there um, devices here which are measuring the current? Is there an op amp or something that's m multiplying up the voltage across these current sense resistors? Certainly very interesting to have no microcontroller. It says there that the uh, design date is 2012-0709 so it's a seven year old design. Let's see if I can find out what those six pin devices are. I can see some A1Ms and I know from memory that those are 2N3904s or 6s or something like that. But I'm quite... Oh, oh and there's a 1AM there. Oh, maybe it's the 1AMs. Uh, yes, actually it's a 1AM that's the 2N transistor. Those chips look like they are G3PF and it looks like they're all G3PF. I'm going to look that one up. So this little G3PF chip on the underside of this board, of which there are three, might be this. Now this datasheet doesn't actually have one of the codes as G3PF, although of course later editions, revisions may do. But it's a battery protection IC for a one cell pack. There are three of them. And certainly the pinouts seem to conform to uh, this datasheet. So I'll put a link to this datasheet in the description below. 
But uh, yeah, certainly this seems to be a protection IC for just a single cell. It has the ability to switch off the charge MOSFET and separately switch off the discharge MOSFET. And of course, we've got discharge MOSFETs here. The charge MOSFET appears to be over there. So I certainly think this is uh, either it or something very close to it. And the three charge MOSFET control outputs and the three discharge MOSFET control outputs all go, so that's six outputs, all go to one of these A1SHB little P-channel MOSFETs. So it does look like these three are independently controlling um, charge and discharge. And then the circuitry here is probably aggregating the outputs from these chips so that if any one of them says, sorry, we're no longer allowed to do charging or we're no longer allowed to do discharging, control is handed to drivers for the uh, discharge MOSFETs, these two big ones here, or this charge MOSFET here. That appears to be how this works. Now that of course means that this has uh, full protections, probably this temperature protection is also incorporated, but there's no attempt to balance these cells. Now what about the cells? These are INR 18650 uh, 13Q, pretty sure the 13 is something to do with the 1.3 amp hours or 1300 milliamp hours. These are Samsung SDI EM. Now INR, it appears, is lithium manganese nickel, and it does actually have a nominal voltage of 3.6 rather than 3.7. So they're probably right to call this a 10.8 volt pack. Now, of course, I do intend ultimately to uh, take these cells out and probably dispose of these boards, but just for the amusement, I thought it'd be quite fun to try and put this thing back together again without shorting everything out. Let's give it a go. Get the orientation of this right with negative, positive, and the charging lead. So that, I think, goes on there. Hook these terminals back over the plastic ends. They won't stay put now. Okay, I think that's everything roughly in place. Now can I get this back in here without everything falling out? Get that little temperature sensor in there. Yeah, that seems to be back together and without losing any of these cables, they all do seem like they're starting to fray a little bit. Yeah, let's give that a try in the Parkside drill. That's in there. Yeah, that seems to work. And then squeeze this to get this back over the top there. And yeah, that's gone back together nicely. So it seems quite a common thing with these uh, three cell battery packs that uh, they have a full suite of protections because that protects the manufacturer against claims, I guess. But that they don't have any form of balancing, which means that as the cells gradually drift apart, the uh, battery pack is going to top out um, when the highest voltage cell reaches its high voltage and stop working when the lowest voltage cell reaches its lower voltage and as those drift apart the service life of this thing the runtime will just seem to reduce and reduce and reduce until there's almost nothing left so that's what you get for a pound uh, three fairly low capacity high current power designed for power tools uh, cells and some interesting electronics with uh, no microcontroller in sight it's um, discrete single cell protection circuits and lots of other stuff and it does make me wonder what's inside uh, this 18 volt 5 cell pack is it a similar arrangement or is it entirely different is there perhaps a microcontroller in this one well you can find out if you rush down to wix one pound each cheerio